Hi, my name is Andy Nichols, and today I'd like to show you how easy it is to get started with Qt for mobile in Qt 5.2. So what I've done is installed Qt for mobile and just opened up the Qt Creator application. And to start a new project, I'm just going to click the new project button. We'll select a Qt Quick 2 application. We'll call it Qt Mobile Demo. And this is going to be a Qt Quick 2 application. I'm going to also select the Android V7A kit, the desktop kit and both the iPhone OS and iPhone Simulator kit. And we'll click Done. So what this will actually do is create a basic template for a Hello World application, and we can actually build and run that right now on the desktop. And this isn't very interesting. It's just a simple a square with a hello world if you click it it will actually close it so what we'll do is something a little bit more interesting I'll just paste in a little bit of code that I've written earlier and we just need to copy in one pixmap this background.png so we'll open up the QML folder where the main.qml is located and it's on my desktop so I'm just going to copy it from there back into my QML code folder. Put it down to that. And now we can actually just run this on the desktop again to make sure it looks correct. And there you have it. So it's just a tiled star background with an animated Hello World. A lot more interesting than the previous example. So now that we can run it on desktop, uh, the next step we'll take is to run it on Android. So the way we do that is first off we need to make sure that make sure that the Android are we able to build for Android. Uh, to do that, you actually need to go to preferences and go to the Android tab. When you're there, you need to make sure that you have defined the location of your Android SDK. Uh, this you'll get from from the Google website. Uh, you also need the Android NDK and the location of that, as well as Ant and the JDK. In addition, if you don't actually have an Android device set up, you can have a simulator. I've already created one using the AVD manager. Uh, I created a simulator for a Nexus 7 device. So that's what we'll run on first. So all I need to do to run on my Android simulator is to go down to the kit selection, select on Android for ARM EABI V7A, and we'll just put it in release mode. From there, we just hit play. It should pop up a dialog asking me what device I would actually like to run on. We'd like to run on our Nexus 7, and we hit OK. It's going to build, which can take a bit of time, in that it actually needs to package this into an APK file. What I'll do is actually pull up the emulator while we wait. This is the Nexus 7 emulator. And now you can see that it's actually started our Hello World application on our Nexus 7 simulated Android device. So once that's accomplished, the next step is to actually run this on a real hardware device. So we'll just close this out, close the simulator, and if you look here, you'll actually see that we have a Android device run. This is just a. This is actually a Nexus 4 phone. So I'm going to hit play again. I'm going to refresh the device list because I don't actually see my device on there. 
to plug this in. So now you see that we actually have uh, both our Nexus 7 simulator and a hardware Android device. So when I hit play, I'm actually going to select the Nexus 4 phone instead. I'll hit OK. It will actually repackage this and push it to my phone. Make sure it stays alive here. Now you can see the same Hello World application is now running on real hardware uh, for the Nexus 4. All of this can easily be done from Creator, uh, provided that you have the necessary Android, uh, Android SDKs uh, listed in the Preferences tab. Okay, so the next thing we'd like to do is run our Hello World application on iOS. Uh, right now I have the iOS simulator set up and ready to go. You get this uh, from installing Xcode on your Mac. Uh, and I've went ahead and started this iPhone Retina 4-inch simulator. So all we need to do to run this is select the iPhone simulator tab and we'll also select the release mode and just hit play here and what that should do is actually build and package this up in iOS format and run it on the device the advantage of using the simulator here is that you don't have to worry about provisioning profiles like you do when you run on iOS hardware. And here you can see our Hello World application is now running on the iOS simulator and we've done this directly from Qt Creator without actually opening Xcode which is quite convenient in many cases, especially when you're working with QML. So if you've actually set up your iOS hardware device, uh, if, if, if you're able to push applications to your iPhone or your iPad from Xcode, then this should already work uh, when you want to push from Creator. So, Let's just take a look at that on the iPad. This is a iPad mini. And all we need to do to run here, if we've already set up our device for development, is select iPhone OS and just release here. And then we'll just hit play again. And what that should do is build this for iOS and push it to the hardware. And now you have the same Hello World application running on the iPad mini. So uh, to think about the next thing, when your application is actually finished, you'll want to deploy this to either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. In the case of the Google Play Store, this is a matter of submitting a signed APK file and Qt Creator conveniently packages everything into these APK files needed you can go to the Projects Android tab and actually look and set 
many of the things needed to actually create this signed APK file for distributing on the Google Play Store. In the case of iOS, you'll actually need to open your application in Xcode. Whenever Qt Creator runs QMake on your iOS project, this generates an Xcode project which you can open up in Xcode to prepare your app for submission to the App Store. In Xcode, you'll do things like set the version number and the, orienta the orientation that you'd like, as well as uh, the necessary icons of the various sizes, as well as the splash screen. Once this is done, you can package up your application and submit it to the App Store using iTunes Connect.